Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto, Tire Rack, and Die Hard. Over the next two weeks, we'll be taking a quick look at a quartet of high-performance cars that have undergone significant changes this year. Our first pair both offer changes you can feel, but while one has had major sheet metal surgery, the other has kept the updating most discreetly hidden. At $39,210 each, the BMW 633 CSI is a most unassumingly expensive car. The big Bavarian coupe is likely to be noticed only by owners of less lofty bimmers. While its refined shape continues for a seventh year of production, this 83 version has undergone a complete human and mechanical re-engineering. The 103.5 inch wheelbase constitutes a new chassis, with improvements already available on the 5 and 700 series cars. The front McPherson strut suspension now has two rather than one lower control arms for increased road feel and bigger disc brakes. In the rear, the trailing arms and coil springs have been modified to provide better traction during acceleration and proper tire camber and toe-in during hard cornering. All should make the 633 even more of a driver's car. To confirm that perception, we took the 633 CSI to the two-mile Summit Point, West Virginia road course. We found that handling, already very precise, now has less throttle-induced oversteer at maximum cornering speeds. But while this is a big plus on a road course, and in the hands of an expert, the 633 can still be placed quickly broadside by the inexperienced. For more normal usage, we found an improved ride is also a product of the revised suspension. Potholes and expansion joints are absorbed with little jar and wheel shake. And though we weren't terribly impressed with the aggressive-looking contact TS radials, the excellent power ball-type steering continues to be a model of design. Taken as a whole, they make the 633 a far better handling car for a good driver, while also being more forgiving for the poorer pilot. Who could ask for anything more? The other major change is also driver-related and found behind two wide, well-balanced doors. We're not talking about the comfortable yet firm front bucket seats, but rather a totally new dash. The revised instrument package includes a large speedometer and tack, a water temperature and fuel gauge only, an economy monitor, and a computer-controlled service reminder. What's unique about this gizmo? Well, it tailors its warnings to the way you drive. Under the hood is the same 3.2-liter fuel-injected inline six that has powered the larger BMWs for years. Yet improvements in 82 boosted horsepower from 174 to 181 and torque from 188 to 195, all while raising fuel economy to a now acceptable 19 city 29 highway. With the standard gearbox, we also found a gratifying average of 26 over our 100 mile test loop. Despite a fair amount of wheel spinning, the super smooth shifting five-speed manual aided a near rocket-like zero to 60 acceleration time of only 8.5 seconds. A wide power band, unusual for a six cylinder, moved the 633 through an equally exhilarating 16.5 second, 85 mile per hour quarter mile, well on its way to a top speed just this side of 130. The four-wheel ventilated disc brakes seemed perfectly matched to the car's speed and handling. There was no fade after six panic stops from 55 miles per hour. Halts averaged a scant 125 feet. Even on the race course, the brakes pulled this 3,350-pounder down confidently from near maximum speed for even the slowest, sharpest turns. So the top-of-the-line BMW 633 CSI Coupe, already one of the finest engineered cars in the world, is now even better. Changes have been made, not for the sake of change, but to improve performance. Of course, it's not yet perfect, but it does show BMW's predictable striving to get as close as anyone can. Changes have also been made for good reason in this week's second high-performance candidate the Ford Mustang 5-liter convertible. It hasn't been lost on Ford that the original Mustang convertibles are highly sought after by pony car collectors. So
So Dearborn enlisted the help of Brighton, Michigan's Cars and Concepts to lop off the top and make a new showroom traffic builder. The result is a handsome, clean design that shows off the Mustang's wedgy front, cut off rear styling to its best advantage. And like the Riviera convertible we tested last week, you get an electric top with super simple latches that make for quick removal and storage. The very tight-fitting tonneau cover uses plastic retaining strips rather than rust-prone snaps. While difficult to attach, it's more resistant to tearing for longer wear. The airy interior is pretty much like the hardtop Mustangs. The bucket seats have above-average comfort, and there's enough room in the rear for two well-acquainted adults. Since the decision was made for a real back seat, something else had to suffer, trunk space. Never a strong point with Mustangs, it's now just large enough for several soft bags, a pair of rackets, or a beach blanket or two. The performance aspect of this soft top comes solely from the 5-liter high-output V8, the same engine found in the Fireball Mustang GT and Mercury Capri RS. With 175 horsepower, it provides the punch to complement the convertible style that the standard 3.8-liter V6 can't possibly provide. And despite a 200-pound weight disadvantage over the hatchback, it still managed a 0-60 to 60 time of only 7.5 seconds. In addition, a top-down dash over the quarter mile of 16.5 seconds at 85 miles per hour. Both very fast results. While we did notice much more body flex and shake during high revving starts than in the solid top models, it was well within acceptable limits for a unibody convertible. Our car did not have the optional tire and suspension package, but still managed a very respectable showing around this road course. Actually, we like the standard Michelin XVS tires. Cornering was almost as sure as the more expensive TRX rubber, and traction was better for fast starts. But as with all Mustangs and Capris, you often have to leave the racetrack just to keep from spinning. Still, the light, if nearly dead, rack and pinion steering does combine with the strut coil spring suspension for mostly predictable control. Brakes are a standard front disc, rear drum combination that did produce quite a bit of fade after several treks around Summit Point. But in our normal panic stop test, Halt took a brief 127 feet from 55 miles per hour with only modest lock and no pull. Our car also had Ford's five-speed overdrive manual. Along with the smooth, if long, shifts, it was accompanied by an EPA mileage rating of 16 city, 27 highway. The overdrive gearing was largely responsible for a higher than expected test loop economy of 24. It's obvious that a $12,500 to start or $15,000 as tested price tag buys at least some practicality. And with all that flash, it's easy to forget the problems convertibles must bear in year-round ownership. Still on a sunny day, it's easy to fall in love with this fast, bright red two-door. And tolerable fuel economy, along with acceptable road manners, tell us that Ford is on the right marketing track with this very appealing Mustang convertible.